What's going on, y'all? Um, this is an impromptu. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is an impromptu video. In my other video, I said I was going to sleep right after, but then I had remember that the Keisha Cole, this is my story, movie was coming on Lifetime, and I had it on DVI, and I said, girl, let me play catch up. <clears throat> so I played catch up. <laughs> Listen, listen, okay. As I do this, it ain't gonna be long, and I always say that, but for real, for real, because I really, we, okay. This is no hate. I do like Keisha Cole. I just feel as though, <clears throat> did we need this biopic? No, okay. Did we learn some new things? Not necessarily, all right. But was it a good watch to have a good Kiki too and to reminisce about, you know, how Keisha came through? And, you know, mostly a lot of us, for real, for real, if you don't really know her music, which uh, I don't understand, but um, <clears throat> you know the the way it is reality show that went on on BET, Nephi and Frankie reality show, you know. All of that mess. You know that, okay? And if you don't, baby, go on BET. I don't know if it's on BET.com, but I damn sure know that it's on BET Plus, okay? Get into BET Plus. BET Plus got a, got, got a few, a little bit of good stuff on there here and there, you know? But, um, y'all, let me just tell y'all this. Before I turned this camera on, I almost choked myself to death because <laughs> I drank. And the water went down the wrong too, or it went down the wrong way, and bitch, it almost took me out. <laughs> Guys, they here like, I'm only in here by myself. What the fuck gonna happen? But anyway, no, no, no. <clears throat> so if you, my throat hurt from doing all that. But listen, Keisha Cole, first of all, Keisha Cole blocked me on Twitter. Now listen, it was back in the day. I feel what wind up happening is because I feel like half the people that's watching that's gonna watch this um little video about this movie. I feel like nine out of ten is you black and nine out of ten is half of y'all got blocked by her too. Because it was just a wave. It was one I don't know what was going on. Well, I think I know exactly why I got blocked, but I'll tell y'all in a second. It was just a time period that Keisha Cole was blocking everybody on goddamn Twitter. And I was like, girl, what? Like, what are you doing? Like, girl, we like you. You ain't have to block us. You just, we just felt the type of way. Y'all would know what happened. I think what happened between me and her. Girl, I ain't never had no interaction with her. I ain't never at her. I don't even think I was following her. But at the same time, because I try to make it so that I don't follow a lot of celebrities. I don't, I don't know. Something about that just feels, ugh, you know. Just, I, I want to follow regular people. You know what I'm saying? But, it was around the time of the Super Bowl, right? And Keisha said something about Michelle. <laughs> Y'all remember when Beyonce did the Super Bowl? And then she brought, first of all, um, Keisha was in her feelings when Beyonce came out with Bow Down, right? <laughs> she was like, Y'all call, calling these people bitches and stuff. We supposed to be in power women. Whatever the fuck she said, okay? That was then. Then the Super Bowl came through, right? The Super Bowl came through, and then she was saying something about Michelle or whatever. I don't know what the heck was going on, but you know, Black Twitter we was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. We not finna do that. We not finna do that. And I think I said something. Let me stop playing. I said something. <laughs> I don't know what I said, but see, let me tell you something. Ashley not real with it. I'm just shady with it. But see, girl, I don't know what it was laced with. I was, back in the day, I was, I was terrible. Back in the day, I feel like we all was terrible. And, you know, next thing I know, I was blocked. I said, damn, girl, what you doing? I ain't even saying nothing that bad compared to what everybody else said. Because I wasn't being disrespectful. I need to go find a tweet to see what it was, okay? But <clears throat> I just feel like half y'all was blocked by her or at least... A third of y'all that's watching was blocked by her too. So we are not alone. I want her to unblock me, but she probably won't after this. You know what I'm saying? But um, I'm going to just say this. <clears throat> Keisha. Keisha had a storied life, okay? I don't feel like Keisha's career is over where I do would like to have some new music. I would like to have some new music or whatever from Keisha Cole. 
um, bring the gap back. And maybe if you would have brought the gap back, we would have really been into it. But when I found out that she was doing this movie and that she was also going to be playing herself, I said, oh, this reminds me of when Fantasia did her movie. First of all, Fantasia did her movie way too early in her career. Granted, she had a rags to riches story that she wanted to put out there, but I feel like she did her movie way too far into her career, or I should say too in the beginning in her career. And so I would like a redo. I would like a redo because mama went through some things, and that's the story I want to see. Y'all remember Mr. T-Mobile Man? Oh, that was a time. That was a time I was concerned about Miss Fantasia. I'm so glad she made it through that. I'm going to see her in September. I can't wait. Y'all, I remember the time uh, I went to go see her at the Airy Crown, and she had, right before the show, we was waiting outside so they could let us into the theater, and she just so happened to be walking past in the lobby, and she, I was like, you know, I literally was like, and she was like, hello, how you doing? I was like, oh, I can't put that out there, I just can't put that out there. Anyway, moving on for that, girl, Keisha. <laughs> Keisha said, listen, I'm finna take a page out there, butch, and I'm finna play my damn self, because you know what? Lifetime ain't giving us all that damn money. I don't need nobody else to play me. Bitch, this my story. Let me go ahead and do me, okay? I can play me. We can do it in my house. We can do it here. We can do it there. And we can get Debbie Morgan. Because at this point in time, Debbie Morgan play everybody um, mama in a black biopic on Lifetime. She really do. And if y'all know who Debbie Morgan is, look her up. She's iconic herself. All right? Moving on. <clears throat> the movie, first of all, starts off. Keisha and her son going in there to see Frankie's casket. And I said, oh, damn, we started off like this? And then it flashed back, okay? She looking up, and then it flashed back to when she was young, and she was up there living with Miss Yvonne, right? Miss Yvonne, she was kind of a bitch to Keisha. I said, girl, what is your problem? Like, I did, did, did she always used to be like that? I had to think back in my mind's eye and say, girl, when we was looking at the reality show, it looked like she was more so on Keisha's side or whatever. Baby, I didn't know all this shit was going on. Okay, well, maybe that was something that I learned new. Girl, I didn't know Miss Yvonne, you know, was kicking her out and all that stuff, all because she wanted to go get her mama Frankie, her biological mama get her some food and give her some money you know why frankie was out there doing her crackhead stuff may she rest in peace you know like frankie was a character and i feel like the reason why we really looked at um the way it is was for frankie okay because we just didn't know what was gonna happen next um you know, so she had that. She was trying to keep up the relationship with our moms or whatever. And I was just trying to see how Debbie Morgan was going to play Miss Frankie, right? And just as I thought, pure comedy. And it should not have been, okay? This is a drama. This is not a dramedy. This is not a comedy. But I was laughing the whole time. Well, I ain't going to say the whole time. I, when, when Keisha first popped up into the camera and she was in that room... Oh, never. <clears throat> Girl, that was, I was like this. <laughs> she was like, oh, damn, messed that up. Love. I said, Girl, you still messed it up. <laughs> You're a little horse. You're a little horse. You sound like me, okay? Clear that throat. I heard she didn't even like that because she was a little horse or whatever. I I said, oh, I'm going to be real with y'all. Y'all played that motherfucking song out to the point where I can't stand it no more. I cannot stand it, but the niggas, girl, it's the black national anthem at this point. Understandable, okay? That, right along that song, girl, she will forever eat off of that, okay? Will forever eat off of that, and I like that for her. You know, um, <clears throat> the girl that they had playing her at the beginning, Baby, I'm literally thinking that she playing a 14-year-old or a 13-year-old. No, that was an 18-year-old Keisha. I said, oh, mama look like she 12. Sitting between that boy legs who literally, you up here talking to me about you want to have babies and we want to get married next thing. You know, we see you. You at the party with another bitch. I said, niggas ain't shit sometimes. Niggas ain't shit. I said, no wonder why Keisha be out here looking like she be looking like she finna whoop somebody ass because you niggas be playing games. Y'all just be playing games all the damn time. But girl, when Keisha popped up, 
The movie went from, I had hope, okay? I had hope, you know, because the acting was cool in the beginning. When it was everybody else, when it was Miss Yvonne, Young Keisha, Lil Jamal, okay, the other dude, you know, even Effie, okay, Nephi, I should say, girl, we'll get on Nephi in a second. I was like, oh, all right, this gonna be cool, but then when Keisha came through, I said, you know what, cut it, <laughs> cut it, cut it, pull the plug, cut the cameras, dead ass, okay, I said, oh. You know, but I'm not going to go too hard on Keisha because Keisha ain't no actor. And I like the fact that she put that um thing up at the end, you know, talking about, uh, you know, I think they did like an 11-minute uh, little behind the scenes or whatever, how we come together. She was like, bitch, I don't know how y'all do that acting shit because that shit is hard. I said it's understandable because people be thinking it's real easy. Like, girl, I could just get up here and then when them lights on your ass and then you got all the motherfuckers around you, you got to act like everything is all to the good, girl. You're scared. You're trembling. Okay, bitch, I'd be lit the fuck up like a light bulb if I was on the set. That's why I would never want to do that. Uh, unless you're paying me a lot of money and I'm doing it with somebody that I really, really like. But other than that, hell no. Y'all can have that. Meanwhile, you know, she going from place to place. You know, she got $14,000. I said, 14, the state gave her $14,000 because she was a little foster. When Miss Yvonne took her out uh, when she left to go talk to Frankie, and then she came home a little late because she was talking to Frankie, girl, and then going to change the locks. She changed the locks and then going to kick her out, put her shit up in a goddamn garbage bag, a black garbage bag at that. I said, you know what, Miss Yvonne, you know, I just don't understand parents that uh, adults, let me just say that. I don't understand adults that like to embarrass kids like that, okay? I said, that is embarrassing. You got this girl calling around just because she wants to go see her mom. You jealous or something? Like, what is happening? What is happening? I said, Keisha, Missy Marie was a bitch like that? No shit, no offense, but I'm just saying, it was just a lie. I was just looking at her like, mm. I ain't like that. I ain't like that. She got to go couch surfing or whatever, all because... You ain't following my rules. Girl, she was up there seeing her mama and it was an accident. Like, come on. You was just doing the most and then you didn't want her to leave to go to L.A. You kicked me out, but then you don't want me to leave to go to L.A. Like, girl, make up your mind, okay? She up here playing around up in hotel rooms and all that stuff. I said, girl, be careful. Be careful, okay? Mama been through the years. She was a, I ain't know Keisha did her. You do her. You do her. I said, oh, bitch, no wonder. She said, yeah, girl, I could do some her. You know, she went to some party that some dude told her about that said Ron Fair was going to be up in there. Girl, she go over there to see him, and he talked to some other dude who tried to sleep with her, talk about some, you can give me your CD. We can listen to it at my house. Girl, fuck you. I said, thank you, Keisha. Thank you, Keisha. You ain't fall for the bullshit. But she gave her thing to Ron Fred, uh, Fair, and he was like, listen, I listened to it in the car or whatever. And she was like, no need. <laughs> I said, uh-uh. 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 If I was at a party, okay, let's just be real. I was at a party, and I'm... <laughs> and then all of a sudden... The music stopped because somebody up here wailing over there in the corner. Somebody up here wailing over there in the corner, taking all of the attention away. Ah, turn the goddamn music up so I can get my bounce on, okay? Bitch, I just sound real old right in there. I said, Keisha, cut that noise down. She said, no, bitch. These motherfuckers finna hit me. I said, all right, get your label. And then the nigga ain't even gonna hit her up for another year. And then gonna pop up in her uh, shop and gonna say something. Your voice has been on my mind ever since I heard you a year ago. I said, well, bitch, how come you ain't give me the deal a year ago? I said, don't come up in here talking no shit like that, trying to butter me up and make it seem like I was all to the good and I was always on your mind. Girl, stop it. Baby, she went on ahead and said, yeah, I want that deal, okay? And then she come up in there. He said, don't quit your job yet because you ain't got the deal yet. Go get you a lawyer, okay? And then she, Manny just so happened to be up in the... um the barbershop or whatever, getting his head done. And I was sitting here like, he telling her, you know, I can get you gigs and I can get you that. And I was like, don't trust that man. Because at first I ain't hear who the name was, but then I realized it was Manny. Everybody know Manny, okay? Especially if you watch this, uh, <clears throat> the way it is, the reality show. Manny was everywhere. Manny's still out here putting out some hood classics, I ain't even gonna lie. Some of the little hood black movies that he be putting out, I be watching. I be like, mm, 
all right <laughs> it's ghetto as hell but i like it anyway so he doing all of that and he he was just like so he sound like a little pimp i said uh-uh keisha don't do that don't do that because he sound like he finna take you for what you were and then he finna put your ass on the track okay throw you on the corner and say work for that money bitch you know and she was like nah 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 it's all to the good but kind of found out it was manuel and he did what he was supposed to do and it was just really confusing to me because one moment she a kid, the next moment she an adult, the next moment she already platinum. I said, God damn, what? How we tail jumping like this? I said, you know what? Certain things, I, I understand it's a biopic or whatever. They could have gave it like a two night. No, no, they shouldn't. They did what they supposed to. They did what they supposed to. I was like, mm, it just felt a little incomplete, but I still was in here, in here for it. Um, you know, I, I, I was disappointed <clears throat> when she met Booby. Okay. Then you Gibson, her baby DZ number one, her husband number one. I, I, I felt some type of way about it because he ain't had his ex in. He, y'all know, y'all, my name Booby and, uh, you know, I be out there with Keisha, you know, I used to play basketball. Y'all know how he be. He, he, he sound a little, he sound a little sleep with it. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I wanted to hear that. And I ain't get that. I ain't get that. Let's talk about Naffy. One of the sisters named Malik, okay? And they had her looking normal. They had her acting normal. <clears throat> Naffy had all of the attitude. And I mean, I know Naffy was doing a lot. The real Naffeteria. But this nephew was doing a lot. I said, girl, I know nephew sitting at home like, ain't this not a bitch? This how you see me? Because that's how I would be sitting there at the TV like this. I, Ke Keisha, this how the fuck you see me, huh? Look at her hair. My hair wasn't like that, bitch. I said, and let me tell you something. Where y'all get them wigs from for Nefertiria? Okay, that one time where they were sitting on that couch, all three of them together, all of them together, she was telling them about the show, and she had that goddamn rooster wig, and it just kept on going like this, and not the one that had the uh, blonde patch, the black one, the pitch black one, and it just kept on going like this. I said, what in the Tyler Perry studio is going on? What is going on? And some of the people that work with Tyler Perry was in the cast. I said, huh, that explains a lot. Maybe y'all filmed it down there on his studio. Who knows, okay? But at the same time, I was like, mm. she was giving a lot of attitude. She was giving a lot of fever. She was giving a lot. And when Keisha came through and she burnt the goddamn contract for season four for the uh, reality show, I said, damn, Keisha, just because you having issues, you're going to stop the check from your family. That's kind of fucked up. But I understand. But it's kind of fucked up. You know what I'm saying? But um, they was pissed. And if I was nephew and them and I wanted some money and all that stuff and I ain't never had all that money, I probably would have been mad too. Okay? I would have been mad too. You know what I'm saying? It's understandable. It's a natural reaction. Um, Debbie Morgan playing Frankie. Hilarious. Hilarious. When she heard Keisha on the fucking radio for the first time, Frankie was in a crack house. Okay? She was in a crack house. Laid out, cracked out, drugged up. And she heard that voice playing on the radio. She was like, Keisha, Keisha, cold tea, cold tea. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> She's like, that's my baby. Then when she was getting caught and the police came up after she'd already been in the spotlight or whatever, and she was out there on the street back on the drug, and she was up there trying to get that stuff. And then the police was coming. She was like, man down, man down. And I said, ooh. First of all, I laughed too fucking hard when I heard Cold Tear and when I heard Mandel because it just didn't have the feeling and the flavor that Frankie Lyons had, okay? It didn't have it. You know what I'm saying? It didn't have it. I understand why, but I'm just saying it was, it was funny when Frankie said it, but we felt the passion in it. You know what I'm saying? She believed that. You know what I'm saying? When Debbie Morgan did it, I was just like, <laughs> this ain't it. <laughs> I should've been cracking up like, <laughs> I know. I don't know. It took me out. I said, man, that, I said, put the crack pipe down, girl. She put that crack pipe down like three, four times. I said, mm, mm. She almost had it right. She almost got it right. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with y'all. 
I have never seen Keisha Cole laugh and smile as much as I did in this movie, though. Because, like, when we was first introduced to her girl, you know, and as time went past and we knew of the struggles and stuff that she was having with her family, with her relationships and all that stuff, even probably the industry, she would just be looking like she would whoop somebody ass in a minute. Like, she just had that look about her. I was like, mm, mm. Don't hit me. Like, she gave me that. Like, girl, I better make sure if I'm going to walk past you, let me make sure my air don't touch your ass because you probably will slap me for that. She was giving that energy, you know. But at the same time, I just realized, I, I just know that it was because of how she was brought up. And she just had a hard, hard life or whatever. But it was so good to see her, you know, in this movie just laughing it up. I don't care if it was fake or not. She looked like she had a good time making a movie, though. You know, it, it was comedy. I say, y'all, even though because it's a Lifetime movie, baby, we ain't, we ain't expecting no Oscar-worthy goddamn, you know, performance. And this is a person that does not act or whatever. So, she did a good job for that. But movie still was kind of on the ugh side. It was a little cringe. It was a little cringe, but in a funny way, okay? Would I watch it? Not on my own. I wouldn't watch it again on my own. If it was coming on, if I was like flipping through the channels, oh, Keisha Cole, this is my story on. I sit there and watch it like that, but would I intentionally put it back on? No. <laughs> Oh, I am never getting a block from her. God damn. This is what I get for being honest. You know what I'm saying? But I said some good things. Like, go watch it. For real. We got to support, bitch. We got to support because we need some more music. You know, um, one of my favorite Keisha, uh, Keisha Cole songs. I love her duets. I love when, uh, her features and stuff. Uh, the song that she did with uh, Lil' Kim and Missy Elliott. A bitch, when that came out, it was everywhere for a long time. Like, when I tell you that, uh, I just love songs that literally make you feel like a certain type of season. And that is, I feel like, that's genius. Like, that is, that's crazy how people can do that. Because you just hear a song and it just make you feel like, oh, bitch, we should be playing this by the fire in the wintertime. Okay? Or we should be walking through some leaves, you know, in the fall. Or, bitch, this is a summer jam right here. It just makes you feel like summer. And that's what that was. You gotta hear it. Don't wanna tell you the right way. You don't wanna let it wanna be. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, and then I also like trust with Monica Listen. That's my shit, bitch, okay? Because first of all, y'all already know, Monica, my girl, for real, for real, we go up, we go down, we go in and out. Bitch, when the fuck you bringing out some goddamn music? Chapter 38 was 15 years ago. We 40-something. What happened? What's going on? Tired of you. Okay, get off of Apple Music Radio or whatever and put out some goddamn music, girl. We ain't asked for that. We asked for a goddamn album. Moving on from that. But trust, girl, I love that vocal arrangement between them two playing off each other, their voices. Oh. And plus, I was always doing what Monica said. Uh, uh, you know, I be up here. I used to be up in there singing and all that stuff, whatever. You know, just. <laughs> That's when I was younger, girl. I don't do that shit. Mm, let me stop playing. I still do it. <clears throat> Can't get on here and lie to y'all. Can't get on here and lie to y'all. Because, you know, we grown. We grown. We can admit these things. Like, bitch, we still be singing. We be singing like, girl, we put on concerts. We put on concerts and we put on our best concerts ever, bitch. Beyonce who? Bring out to who? Girl, it's motherfucking Ashley and them, okay? It's you and them. Bitch, we throw them bitches out the water, okay? That's how it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, Where I deal at? Where I deal at, okay? Meanwhile, you know, I, yeah, the verses, girl, y'all remember when Keisha did the verses with Ashanti? <laughs> oh, my God, we had such a time because Keisha, Keisha came late as shit. Keisha came late as shit. Ashanti went through half of her B-sides of her goddamn catalog before uh, Keisha came there. And then when she came there, she got a little sauced. She got a little sauced. 
I said, child, it's a good thing they both wasn't in the same goddamn room because ain't no telling what would have went down that night. But um, we like Keisha Cole. Girl, I'm, I'm just being messy. Y'all remember when um Keisha Cole was up on Birdman's piano, drunk, doing all of that? I said, girl, get your ass down and stand the fuck up. Y'all remember when they said that she tried to fuck up um, Bow Wow's Rolls Royce? I said, let that little bitch go and you stand the fuck up, okay? That's what you better do. You better stand the fuck up, all right? But um, we're here for Keisha Cole. The, mu the movie was the movie. It was a fun time for me. I like to laugh. You probably would too. And um, I will just say this. We knew Frankie passed away. I didn't appreciate y'all making that scene at the end. When she was up in there. I just didn't appreciate it. Y'all ain't had to show her doing the crack. Y'all ain't had to show her overdosing like that. The way Debbie, I mean, Keisha was calling her. Keisha was calling her to wish her happy birthday. Tell her mama, I love you. And she couldn't even answer the phone. Cause that crack hit her real bad and she just fell over the bed. I said, Frankie, get up. I said, blink, bitch. She said no. I said, oh. I didn't want to see that. I didn't want to see that. But other than that, everything was cute. <laughs> everything was cute. But um, yeah, y'all tell me how y'all felt about that. Y'all watch the movie. And also, <clears throat> Since we here, a new movie came out on Netflix, and it's called The Perfect Fine with Miss Gabrielle Union. Um, did y'all watch Mary J. Bly's movies, Real Love and Strength of a Woman? Those were good, too. Those was really good, too. Um, I ain't gonna lie. Lifetime, y'all had me cooked on y'all uh, goddamn channel for three weeks. Y'all really had me hooked on y'all channel for three weeks showing black shit. And I was here for it. Black women empowerment. Black excellence. Okay. But go to Netflix and um watch The Perfect Fine. Okay. It has Keith Powers on there. It has Gina Torres. It has Lala Anthony. Girl, it took me a minute to realize that that was Lala Anthony. It has the um lady that played um here on 911. She on there. It got... Oh, excuse me, Gabrielle Union. It got Golden Brooks, Baby Daddy, aka uh, Aaliyah brother on um Blue from Temptations, bitch. Okay, I'm gonna miss you, my friend. Oh, them damn short ribs took him out. Fuck. And he look good on that. I said, all right, all right, come through. Um, you know, them two was all of them people was on there. Okay. And it, it, it Jenny Hubert, the original unveil. Now, the movie came out, I believe, this past Thursday or yesterday, which is Friday. Either way, I watched it. Um, It's like an hour and a half or so, give or take. And I'm going to watch it again because I just feel as though, as a whole... I've seen this movie before. I've seen this concept before. Basically, you we uh, Gabrielle Union character Jenna, Jenna, Jenna. Okay, she's an older woman. She's forty years old. She gets dumped by her boyfriend of ten years, who's like this public figure, and she made a name for herself in the fashion industry. You know, she gets dumped by him. She goes, um, to, and it was publicly. I don't know if he cheated or whatever, but I, I have to look that up. But um, she goes stays with her mom. When we first see her, she over there at mama house. Mama said, you gonna have to get the fuck out because daddy said that he ain't gonna touch me while you here. And mama box was hot and she said, you gotta get out. That was the reason why she had to get out. She said, bitch, you been laying up in there for a year, okay? You gotta get back to goddamn reality. She went back to New York. She had to go to Gina Torres, which her arch nemesis, who couldn't stand her ass because she felt as though she was taking everything from her. You know, she had to go to her for a job, okay? Because she had got fired from her job. Um, and she wound up going to a party. Uh, she wound up kissing on some dude. 
young boy, okay, kind of found out that young boy is Gina Turner, uh, Torres' son. They tried to keep their little relationship on the wraps and under, uh, um, you know, on the low low, you know, and then all of a sudden it came out because they get caught at the end. I will say this. I'm going to have to watch it again. I ain't... And then she fucked around and got pregnant. I hope y'all ain't watched it yet. Or, or if you watched it, please. If Y'all know the deal. Y'all know the deal. I want y'all to watch it yourself. I just spoiled a whole bunch of shit. She fucked around and got pregnant. Okay? She got pregnant at the end after they broke up. You know? And my whole thing is... So cliche. You know? It's like you've seen it before. You've really seen the storyline before, but different tellings of it. Sometimes it'd be intriguing. Sometimes it'd be good. Sometimes it'd be, uh. Right now, off of my first watch, the movie was kind of, uh, okay? It, 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 I felt it was a little rushed, and I really do feel as though it would have been better, more detailed, if they would have given it like a TV series. I could definitely see The Perfect Fine being a TV series. You know, it's giving me a little bit of being Mary Jane, but a fun being Mary Jane, a fun being Mary Jane, not too uptight, um, a little bit of Ugly Betty, you know, the Wilhelmina Agency, giving me a little bit of that. That's what Gina Torres was giving me. She was giving me very much Vanessa Williams um, on Ugly Betty, um, you know. I would definitely love to have seen that as a series, and I probably would have enjoyed it a lot, you know, but I just felt like they kind of rushed the movie a little bit. From what I've heard, they changed the ending, like the pregnancy thing really wasn't in there because it's coming from the book um, called The Perfect Fine by Tia Williams. I literally just downloaded it so I can look, read the book first, uh, read the book, and then compare, you know what I'm saying? So, I got me a new book, which... I'm glad, okay. I, I, I never heard of her before. And she a black author, so I was like, let me go through all her stuff. I just went and brought a whole bunch of us, bitch. I'm trying to get back up into my reading and shit. <laughs> I'm adulting, girl, okay, bitch. I am adulting, girl. I will say, you know, people were saying that the chemistry was there between Keith Powers and Gabrielle Union. And I was stuck, like, it's the chemistry there between them in this movie. I don't know if I could really tell or if I really felt it. Um, or do I think that somebody else should have played Jenna, the main character who was played by Gabrielle Union? I don't know. I'm leaning towards that, but I'm not mad at the movie. Like, usually if I don't get it on the first try, I say F it and I'm not going to go back. But the movie wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I just want to watch it again, you know, and see if some of my opinions about the movie would change, which I'm pretty sure it would. It's, it's going to. Um, but I say give it a chance. It's on Netflix. It's called The Perfect Fine. Um, when she was on the phone with her mama, <laughs> and somebody came knocking at the door, <laughs> she said, that's probably the pillows that I sent you. And she was like, let me go look. Girl, she didn't even hang up the phone, or she didn't even put her on pause and say, Mama, hold on. Mama just, she just put the phone down, and Mama was still talking. She was holding the whole conversation back, was still back to that. She came back to the phone. I said, that's how my grandma be. <laughs> it was funny. Jenny Huber and Gina Torres did it for me for that movie, okay? They did it for me. And Lala was being a little back curious on that thing. At one point, she was single. I think she turned out to be the throuple. I said, what? And once you see Lala, I said, bitch, that's Lala? It took a good 30 minutes into the film for me to realize that that was Lala. Because she didn't look like Lala. She had the curls. Like, she had ethnic curls up in her head. <laughs> Let me get the fuck up off it. <laughs> Oh my God, anyway, y'all know, I get goofy when I'm tired, and I am extremely tired. <laughs> I am extremely tired. Girl, and I gotta go to work tomorrow, but um, y'all, watch Keisha Cole's This Is My Story on Lifetime, and if you did not or don't have the, mo the channel or whatever, you missed the air, I'm pretty sure they're gonna re-air it, or you could download the Lifetime app. And it's going to be on there, probably a free viewing or whatever. Or, you know, you do what you got to do. Um, And then again, f watch The Perfect Fine on Netflix. Bitch, I got to watch Black Mirror. 
And y'all want to know what else I watched? I watched John Wick 4. I finally watched John Wick 4. Why was that movie almost three hours? It was literally two hours and 56, uh, uh, 46 minutes. Why? It was too damn long. It, it didn't really give us nothing. But a couple of action scenes, probably like three long ass drawn out action scenes of fighting and Keanu Reeves and his dialogue I said is he a little remedial or something like what's going on they didn't hear that nigga is superhuman okay that motherfucker got hit and tossed into a goddamn light pole and then bounced off that bitch and rolled down tumbled down 222 stairs and got the fuck up and whoop some ass. I said he's not human at this point. It was a good movie. It was a good. It's just long as shit. I also saw Magic Mike, the last movie. <sighs> Why they had it? Okay. Why they had it? You know, I just I be wanting to see what the hype is, so I watch stuff, and then I be like, okay, well let me go ahead and watch the second one. That's what happened with Magic Mike, cause you know, gay. But I like to see motherfuckers dance, okay? And I was just like, mm. Why is he on here doing all of this stuff? I said, it just felt real unseasoned. Unseasoned. Y'all took that shit up there to Europe, to London, London town. And I was just like, mm -mm, take it back to the Americas, no shade, and get a little nigga up in there and get a little, mm, we need to, some saffron or something up in this bitch. And girl, get some lavies, okay? Chenna Tatum, you look like you got all of that up in your cabinet. Where was it? I ain't gonna lie. His little dance that his little um solo that he did at the end with old girl, that little contemporary type of thing. It was cute. It was cute. That was probably the best shit. Uh, everything else, I was just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and also, I watched the movie 1917. Y'all need to watch that. It's on Showtime. Magic Mike, The Last Dance, whatever the fuck, that's on HBO. Uh, 1917. It, I was surprised that I liked that movie, okay? It was really good. It, that's on Showtime. Uh, who, what else did I say? John Wick, that shit just came out. So you'll find it on somebody's streaming service. Look at The Perfect Find on Netflix and go look at Keisha Cole. This is my story. And I'm about to tell it. <laughs> I don't like that. I'll see y'all answers later. <laughs>